In this general video, I want to provide folks with just a brief overview of the GNU Image Manipulation Program, also known as GIMP. This is a good alternative that if you are not paying for an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription or for access to Adobe Photoshop, that you can get a lot done as far as materials, textures, and other typographical elements. Now, to begin, whenever you first open GIMP, you're going to see several items, including as far as a tabbed option section, as far as brushes, you also have your patterns, your fonts, and your document history. Down at the bottom here in the lower right hand corner, you have access to the different layers as far as controlling your assets that you design and add. Thirdly, you also have on the, on the left hand side, you have your main toolbox. Now, as a reminder for those who are not familiar with this type of interface, if you see a small arrow down in the corner, you can actually click and hold and it will give you options to different types of tools. Likewise, if you just hover, it'll also show you what else is in that group of tools. So to give you a for instance here, I'm going to go ahead and say File New. And I'm going to go ahead, you have several different types of templates as far as what you could be working with, but I'm going to leave it at the default here for me at least, of 1920 by 1080. Additionally, there is an advanced options section that if you hit the little plus symbol, you can change your resolution, what the color space is, as far as either RGB or grayscale. You can also change as far as the gamma, any type of fill options. So for instance, if you don't want to have a background, you can actually change this to be transparent. And then also too, you can add comments to your document. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to get started. And my background was filled with blue because that's actually the background color I'm working with here. Now, to get started here, you can now work between the foreground and background color and change their colors by clicking on them. You then get a color picker that will allow you to come in and click and change your specific colors here. This is good when you are working with your brush tools and other shapes that you can change as far as the layout goes. The other thing I want to show is over in the right hand side here. Notice now I have a brand new layer that is called background. Right now it is visible to the user, but if I wanted to make a new layer down at the very bottom of this window, there is a small icon. It looks like a little page with a plus symbol. I can then go ahead and click and maybe I say brush demo. Here you can see as far as different changes and options as far as specific to the layer and I'll say OK. And the checker box for the icon denotes that it's a transparent background. I didn't actually apply a background to this. So now what we're going to do is to demonstrate I'm going to go ahead and take the paintbrush tool. You are strongly encouraged to go through and play with the different tools and learn what they do. With the paintbrush tool though, I'm going to come over and I'm going to choose a paintbrush. So maybe I choose this lined tool here. Now I can just start by clicking or even clicking and dragging. However, I want to draw your attention here to the left side where you can actually change as far as the specific options to the brush. So maybe I want the brush to take up more of the page. So I'm able to change the size and change the overall feel of the brush. So once I'm done designing and doing all of my artwork as far as the design and layout goes, I'm going to want to save this file and I'm also going to want to export it so that I could pull it into a software package like Maya, Unity, or Unreal. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and do File and Save. If I do a File and Save, this is going to save a working copy of my document. Notice that as far as a GIMP document is concerned, its native file format is the XCF. So I will call this Working Texture and I'll go ahead and save my file. However, I'm not done here yet. What I'm going to want to do is I'm also going to want to export the document into a published document. 
So under the file dropdown, I'm going to go ahead and choose export. Notice that by default, it wants to set this to a PNG. However, if you need a different file type, down at the bottom of the window, right now next to it is a little plus symbol that says select file type by extension. I can click on this and what it will do is it will expand out and show me all the different file types that I can save for my file. So for demonstration purposes, maybe instead of a PNG, I actually wanted this to be a JPEG graphic. I click on JPEG and notice in the name, it's now changed the file extension for me. So I can now go to my desktop and I can click export. It's going to ask some additional information as far as the quality for the graphic that you want. For most things that you will be working on, especially from an introductory standpoint, the default is fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and say export. So now if I go ahead and jump out to my desktop, you can see two files have now been added. I have my working GIMP file, but I also have a JPEG of my texture. At this point now, I'm ready to go ahead and start editing and pulling in these documents into the software packages that I need.